strategies to support them. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I will be splitting my time with the member from Surrey Centre. I appreciate having the opportunity to take part in this important debate tonight. First, please allow me to address the tragic events of Sunday night in Quebec City. When I first learned of this cowardly and senseless act of terrorism, I felt many emotions. Outrage that innocent people in a place of sanctuary and worship could be subject to violence. Sadness for the victims, for their families, and for whose feeling of safety has been shattered. Concern that this act of intolerance could spur more intolerance. But when I feel these emotions, I find myself reminded of a great Canadian, Sir Wilford Laurier, who told us that love is better. So I say to all Canadians, let us choose love. Love for those who will grow up without their loved ones. Love for a community in mourning. Even love for those who try to stroke, fear to further their own narrow ends. Whatever our ethnicity, our faith, or our background, we are all Canadians. We are all united against violence and hatred. Mr. Speaker, I've heard from many of my constituents who are concerned they could be impacted by the immigration measures introduced recently by the government of United States of America. I share their concerns. I'm an immigrant myself. I was relieved to learn that the Prime Minister's office was in frequent contact with senior White House officials over the weekend and that our embassy in Washington, D.C. continues to engage with the administration to get the best possible information on how these policy changes will impact Canadians. Thanks to these efforts, we have been assured that Canadian citizens and permanent residents who are dual nationals are not affected by this executive order, even if they are citizens of one of the seven specified countries. All Canadian passport holders and permanent resident card holders should be able to travel to the United States as before. Our officials remain in close contact with the U.S. officials to receive further clarity. I was also reassured by the words of the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, both on Sunday and here tonight, when he said that any foreign national from the seven countries listed in the executive order who were transiting through Canada and are stranded will be provided temporary resident status until they can make arrangements to return home. Mr. Speaker, while we can disagree with them, each country has the right to set its own policies when it comes to immigration. What we can do is make our own choices based on our values and model those values and as an example to the world. As an immigrant and a member of parliament, I'm proud to be Canadian. I'm proud of the example that Canada is setting for the world. Our country is open and welcoming. Canada has been lauded around the world for its leadership in welcoming refugees, fleeing persecution, terror, and war. And in 2016, in response to the Syrian refugee crisis, we welcomed and successfully resettled over 45,000 refugees. Let me take this opportunity to thank the Honourable Member for Markham Thornhill for his leadership and determination as the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada in achieving this goal. While we wish him good luck in his new role, we will miss his caring and compassion in this place. I have had the opportunity to meet many of the Syrian refugee families that have settled in Scarborough and their gratitude for the opportunity to be in Canada is overwhelming. These families and especially the children have been through so much. But to see the children be in a place that is safe, to see 
the twinkle in the eyes and the smiles on their face as they strap on skates for the first time or play in the snow in their first Canadian winter. It warms the heart. And the support from the community has also been overpowering. I have met with local employers who have hired refugees and been so impressed with how hard they are working and how grateful they are for this opportunity. On Saturday, I had the opportunity to join the Metropolitan United Church as it held a celebration marking one year since they welcomed the Bakur family from Syria to their new home, Canada. Canadians have opened their arms and their hearts, as we always have, to those fleeing war and persecution, who are just looking for what we take for granted, the opportunity to live in peace and give their children better opportunities than they have had. There is still work to do. At the Standing Committee on Citizenship and Immigration, we completed a study on Syrian refugee resettlement and made a number of recommendations for improving the provision of important settlement services. I know the government will consider these recommendations and act accordingly. After all, in Canada, better is always possible. What will not change, however, is the warmth and generosity of Canadians. In 2017, Canada will welcome 40,000 refugees and protected persons, other than last year, one of the highest levels of refugees welcomed on record in Canada. With these efforts, Canada continues to be a key contributor to the international effort to address humanitarian protection issues and offer asylum to the most vulnerable persons fleeing persecution, terror, and war around the world. But, Mr. Speaker, it is not just about offering a safe heaven for those fleeing persecution. Immigration benefits our country. Immigration grows our economy. Immigration contributes to our diversity, and our diversity is our strength. Take this past weekend as an example. On this one weekend alone, I attended Lunar New Year celebrations with the Chinese community and with the Buddhist community at a Buddhist temple. The debut of a documentary exploring the contributions of the Pakistani diaspora in Canada. A celebration at a United Church marking the first anniversary of the Syrian refugee family they sponsored arriving in Canada. A Taipongal celebration with the Tamil community. The grand opening of a new Indian cuisine restaurant and the one-year celebration of a Tim Hortons franchise in my riding owned by a Bangladeshi businessman. This is Scarborough, Mr. Speaker. This is Canada. Immigrants start new businesses. They are job creators. Immigrants bring needed skills and new energy. They grow the economy. Immigrating parents and grandparents allow both parents to enter the workforce. They grow our tax base. I was welcomed as an immigrant in 1999, and today, I'm a member of parliament, my husband is working for a bank, one son is in university, and another is not far behind. We have a number of former refugees in this place, including the member for Parkdale High Park and our new Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. They are making important and valuable contributions to their new homes and making this country even greater. We are a nation of immigrants. Other than indigenous persons, everyone here is from somewhere else. Whether we are Canadians by birth or by choice, regardless of your language, your ethnicity, your faith, or your gender, the Canadian dream is open to everyone if you are willing to work hard. The, that equality of opportunity is one of the many things that makes Canada great. This is the Canadian example. These are Canadian values. This is the model that Canada wants to share with the world. These values are why I'm a Canadian. These values are why I'm a member of parliament. These are the values I will never stop fighting for. Thank you.